Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at a low-cost mini PC that would be really good if it just had things configured slightly differently, but you can fix that. This is from a company called Blackview. This is their MP100, and this costs about 250 bucks right now, so it's not all that expensive. It is powered by a Ryzen 7430U processor. This is an older Ryzen chip, but it is pretty powerful. It's got six cores, 12 threads. It has RDNA 2 graphics, and you'll see how well those graphics can perform in a little bit. The problem here is the RAM. They only put in a single channel RAM configuration, at least for the version that they sent over for this review. And had they added a second stick of RAM, this would have been a much better product to talk about. But we're going to look at it anyhow, because if you do slide in another stick of RAM, you'll see it performing better. And I'll show you some examples of how that extra RAM can make a difference in just a second. But I do want to let you know, in the interest of full disclosure, that this came in free of charge from Blackview. However, no other compensation was received. They have not reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded, and all opinions are my own. So let's get into it now and see what this mini PC is all about. Now, a little bit earlier, I took it apart to see what was inside. What's cool is that when you take the cover off, you have a two and a half inch SATA slot there, so you can slide in a notebook hard drive for additional internal storage. You do need to get at these recessed screws with a longer screwdriver, and after you take off the SATA sled, underneath it, you've got even more upgrade options. So you can see that we have 16 gigabytes of RAM on this. Unfortunately, again, it's single channel memory, so if you slide in another 16 gigabyte module, you can bring it to 32, and as you'll see in a few minutes, greatly improve its performance. You will also note that it's got a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD there in the uh, lower portion, and there's an extra NVMe slot as well. So you can have three internal hard drives on this, which I thought was really neat. And you can bring the RAM up to, I believe, 64 gigabytes. So you do have a good amount of expandability here. It's just that you have to spend a little bit more to get it performing at its top performance. I would have liked to have seen two eight gigabyte modules installed on here to get you the performance and the RAM capacity, but unfortunately everything is bulked up on that one stick of DDR4 RAM. But it's got some other redeeming qualities here. It's got very good cooling, and you'll see its performance on that in a little bit. On the front, we have two USB Type-C ports. This is USB 3.1 Gen 2, or whatever the 10 gigabit standard is. So these are not USB 4 ports, but one of these ports is a full service port, so you can get display out of it in addition to using data devices. You have a USB 3 port here for attaching uh, larger USB-A devices, a headphone microphone jack here. And then on the back, you've got gigabit Ethernet, unfortunately not 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, which is what we've been seeing on a lot of mini PCs lately, but gigabit is still good enough. You have another USB 3, USB-A port here, a USB 2 port here. This is where I would plug in your keyboards and mice. You have a display port out and an HDMI out. On the display port, you can drive a 4K display at 144 hertz. So this might be a good pairing with the GeForce Now service, which is a game streaming service that can now go beyond 60 frames per second streaming even at 4K. Remember, you gotta hook up through the display port because that's the only one that'll support 144 hertz, but it will go beyond 60, and this is a lot less expensive than buying a gaming PC that can deliver those kinds of frame rates. So definitely check out my GeForce Now video if you want to learn more about how that service is working. So it's not a total bust here. You got three uh, output options. You can go through the display port, the HDMI, and the USB-C. Just note though, at 4K, only the display port can get you that 144 hertz frame rate. Now the casing is all plastic, which is to be expected at this price point. There are some cool lights here at the top that you can adjust with the software that they include with it. And you can hit different options here to have the lights do different things or just turn it off completely. I was a little worried when I first booted up the computer and saw this icon on the Windows desktop. I never like to have weird icons on my uh, Chinese mini PCs desktops when I boot them up, but I did some extensive malware testing with malware bytes along with the Microsoft malicious software removal tool and a few other things, and there wasn't anything suspicious on the PC. And one other note is that there were some weird Chinese drivers for a USB to serial device, which I believe is what these lights are using uh, to get adjusted via the software. So just be aware of that if you 
have to do some kind of uh, reinstallation. You may not be able to find the drivers for the lights here that easily, but you can adjust that or uh, just turn them off here completely. Now I found performance on this even at 4K60, which is what we're running it at right now to be very fast and responsive. Here we are browsing the nasa.gov homepage at 4K60. And as you can see here, everything just comes to life very, very quickly, no lag or anything like that. And we are running this currently with only a single stick of memory. So for doing basic computing tasks, this is not gonna be an issue. It's really when you get into the higher end stuff like video editing, which I'll show you in a minute, along with gaming. And that's where you'll definitely want that second stick of RAM to maximize the graphics potential of this chipset. And 4K60 video playback was smooth on YouTube here. Uh, this is with a single stick of RAM and we were dropping a couple of frames here and there, but nothing noticeable. I think with two sticks, it'll be perfect, but here it is very, very close to perfect. So no real reservations here in regards to video playback or streaming. And of course we saw how well the games streamed on it earlier. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test with one stick of RAM, we got a score of 20.3. I don't see that score being much different with two sticks of RAM for basic web browsing, and this computer is performing quite well versus its peers, even some of the newer ones, and certainly a lot better than some of the lower cost Intel mini PCs we frequently look at here on the channel. So let's take a look at a little video editing now. These mini PCs are never great as video editors, at least for complex editing, but for simple projects, they can do okay. This is a 4K60 project, and what I'm gonna do real quick is just drop this cross-dissolve transition uh, into the timeline here and let's see how it plays back if it does and there we go so it's okay it's a little on the sluggish side but it's able to get the job done again this would be a little zippier if we had an extra stick of ram because applications like davinci resolve rely more on the gpu than the cpu so when you allow that gpu to run at its full performance things will be a lot better but again don't expect to edit a feature film on this thing it's not designed for that and the same is true for gaming. So this is No Man's Sky running natively now on the hardware. I was running this at 720p at the lowest settings. With one stick of RAM, I was getting about 20 to 25 frames per second. And it was playable, but certainly a bit on the sluggish side. Now here's the same game running at the same resolution, but with two sticks of RAM on board to get that dual channel memory going for the GPU. And here we were getting between 35 and 40 frames per second, a significant performance increase just by sliding in another stick of RAM. So even though we had 32 gigs of RAM, which of course helps, it's really having that memory uh, running at its full speed for the GPU that makes all the difference here. So get that second stick in for video editing and for gaming. Now, as far as emulation goes, I think this would be a great choice for emulation, provided you've got your dual channel memory, especially for PS2 games like this one. I'm running at about eight to 10% behind full speed here when the screen gets busy. So that extra stick will make all the difference in the world and certainly perform a little better than some of the Intel N100 and N150 PCs we typically look at near this price point. And on the 3D Mark Times by benchmark test, we got a score of 1,373 with two sticks of RAM on board and 956 with just one. So a big performance boost here just by adding in that second stick of RAM. And on the 3D Mark stress test, we got a passing grade of 98.6%. That means there's very little drop off in performance even under heavy sustained load, you can see what temperature the CPU was at uh, when it was at full blast there, so that was good. There is a fan on this, of course. It's not that loud when it's running under full load, which is also a good thing. However, the fan does occasionally kick on at idle, maybe when there's some system updates going on in the background or something, and it's a little on the loud side for idle uh, types of activities and web browsing, but again, it's quieter uh, for what you typically hear out of a mini PC when it's under heavy load. But just be prepared for a little bit of fan noise out of this one if you're just browsing the web or working on documents. Power consumption on this is about 10 or 11 watts at idle, very efficient, and about 46 watts was the max load that I saw on my kilowatt test a little bit earlier. 
Linux ran fine on this computer. We loaded up the most recent version of Ubuntu. Everything got detected properly, including the audio, the Ethernet, the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth, and all the other things that you need to run an operating system. So if you were looking to run a couple of versions of Linux on here, you can definitely do that uh, with three internal storage options. And with all the cores that this processor has, it does very well for running Docker containers and server activities on it. And of course, it's very power efficient at idle. So this might be a good choice if you're looking to build out something to run all of your self-hosted applications. So all in, it's a nice little computer. It was really disappointing though that they included so much RAM, but put it all on a single stick. I know I've been driving this point home quite a bit in this video, but it is a significant performance decrease on the graphical side when you only have a single channel of memory on these little Ryzen boxes here. So it would be great if they could just split the RAM up here and keep the price where it is because I would have been very excited about this price point if the RAM was configured a little differently. But all in, a very nice little machine here. It's got a three year warranty on it as well. So that's nice to see. And altogether, if you don't mind spending a little bit more to pop in another stick of RAM, I think you're gonna have a very good experience with this one. That will do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching.